Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in the last scarf video, I cut out all my pieces and also this uh, doily with this embellishment on it. And I also found this piece of lace. So I've sort of just got a little pile of bits and pieces that might join the project. I just can't decide, like I said in the last video, how blingy I want to go. Having said that, I can't help myself by bringing beads out. So I also mentioned in the last video that I had this cotton um, pillow slip. I don't know where I picked it up now. I think I got it from Melanie, purveyor of textiles. So I think it's cotton. Could be very fine linen, but it feels quite lightweight. And I think it'll be good to stitch because it's semi-loose, but not real loose. Now it does have a stain there, which has gone through a little bit to there. So it must have picked it up in storage because it, it's right in the middle. And if it was folded, it feels like the stain has happened there and has gone through all layers. But I'm thinking I can avoid it. So the plan is to break it down and use this as my base for my scarf. And remember the plan is if scarf is too much for Corinne to wear, it's gonna be a snippet roll. <laughs> I'm gonna try to at least, you know, make something I'll wear. So there's a seam there, so. I might just leave it at that and rip off this other seam. So good when you can use fabrics that are, look how easy that tears. You can use old fabrics. And I wanted to keep this piece as natural as I could. That's why I can't decide if I'm gonna bring these in. That I might stay in the cottons and linens and Keep it very natural, but I don't know. I don't like putting too much restrictions on my pieces because you just never know where it's going to go. I like this edge. I don't know what I'd ever use it for, but I like how it's got little ties. It could be stitched onto something and the ties used to secure so if that was the other side, the ties could be brought together to join a wrap or something. It's got potential, hasn't it? Like if that was, um, say, a journal cover and the fabric went out either side. Oh, you can't even see. Hang on. Let's look up here. Okay. Goodness me. Good start to the show, eh? Hey? Um, yeah, this piece I'll keep because that could come together at the center of a, a wrap. You know, you have some slow stitch coming out from either side of it. And this is the edge. And then these little ties bring your journal wrap together. That's what I see this would be good for. There we go. Yeah, so that would make a great closure on something. Anyway, sidetracked. We've got our piece of soft, beautiful cotton, maybe linen. So lineal length is that way. How wide do I want my scarf? Oh my goodness, another decision. Where's these pieces? How big are they going to? don't want it too wide, do you? Do you? <laughs> I don't know. You guys can't even answer me. I sort of feel like that that's the widest I'd want to go, but if it stays soft, it won't really matter. But if it gets too wide, it will matter. 
Decisions. Goodness me. I need a sip of coffee while I think. How wide should the scarf be? Once again, I wish you were all sitting at the end of my desk. And telling me. pepper and bandit mucking around I guess I need to be mindful of that stain actually all right that's gonna probably make the decision for me isn't it so what if there it is there so where's a, a marker There's our little stain. So that is nine inches. So if I went four and a half inches, five inches. Admittedly, I will cover it a little bit. So if I went five inches, the 10 would come here and I can make sure I cover the. So that's a five inch wide scarf. There's two pieces. This side, have I got 10? Yeah, I do. Okay, so I'm going to rip this at five inches. And then I guess I'll swan around the house with a five inch piece of cloth around my neck. See how that feels. Do I go a fraction? What was this again? Yeah, five. Five and a half. I'll go five and a half. Five and a half inches. Done. I'll rip it. Okay, <laughs> we'll go to the other side of that stain. We'll come in here, five and a half. I think five and a half would be fine. Like I said, I just want it so it will tuck inside a jacket. And if it's lightweight enough and can be knotted, well and good, but it might be just when you, you know, when you just sort of fold it over on itself like that and then it sits down inside the jacket yeah I think that'll be fine I guess too is that enough length if that's joined you know like that is that that's enough length oh my goodness I'm sitting down and it's sort of just onto my lap by about that much comes down to my thigh and then goes out about that much I think that's enough there we go I guess we can always take another strip out of here if we need it and add you know half that or let's just start with this to start with I think oh, goodness me can't believe there's so many decisions in this well, let's join this little guy together. How are we going to join it? We could just join it, won't we? Just do a running stitch. That'll do. We could do a French seam. I remember them from school when we used to learn French seams where they hide it like so. If we want it to be neat. But we're not going to be neat because it's going to be full of stitches. So let's forget about that idea. All right. We need needle and thread to run ourselves a nice little stitch. Where's my cotton gone? Where, oh, where is cotton? There it is. I can see it. It's at the end of the table. 
Stay there, guys. <clears throat> I'm back. Would be quicker just to run it to the sewing machine, wouldn't it? And just go, jump, joined. But no. It's been ages since I've used my sewing machine. seam as soft and as flat as possible so I'm thinking I'm just going to do you know join it like so get a pin I could do an overcast stitch but I think I'm just going to do classic back stitch so riveting viewing for you all now, but I'm sure you're busy stitching and you barely looked up at the screen. Where are we going now? We're cooking. Is it going to be straight? Probably not. <laughs> On this snippet slash scarf. Snippet roll, maybe scarf. Scarf, maybe snippet roll. I'm sure it'll be fine. Have faith, girl. That once you finish, you'll be wanting to swan around in your hand-stitched. Oh, I must tell you, I think I mentioned it briefly. There was a lady on our French um, Parisian textile tour that I went on last year. And her name was Karen. She was from America. Hello, if you're watching Karen. I'm not sure if she watches YouTube. And she just was the most elegant dressed lady. And oh, she was this fine, tall, yeah, classic model look. Just a beautiful lady. And she'd wear these big hats and like an Audrey Hepburn hat and long flowing skirts and then a lovely little bolero jacket and oh just layers and because she was such a fine tall lady she could pull off layers the more layers I add to my body the thicker and frumpier I look it's like I just can't wear that sort of boho lace drapey and I love it so much but yeah, maybe when I was younger, I was a bit of a whippet. But yeah, I've blossomed since then. But anyway, she had on most days a slow stitched scarf. And everyone that went up to her, whether they were in a shop working as a, um, that we were visiting or just the girls seeing her first thing in the morning in the hotel lobby, everyone's hands went straight to the scarf. It was quite funny to watch because we'd all had the same experience. It was like, I don't know what they call it, bees to honey. Is that a saying? And she had made it and it was exactly layering of fabrics on top and then stitching into it. It was so beautiful. And she said she's forever working on it. She just adds more and more and more. And it was so pretty. And it was sitting on a denim jacket. And then underneath that, she had a very boho-y, lacy layers. And it was so beautiful. Gosh. She had a big brimmed hat on. She has this fine little pretty face under the hat. She's such a sweet lady. So hello, Karen, if you're, if you're watching, your scarf is still in our minds. And even Susanna commented when she said, uh, you know, what are you going to do for wearables? And I said, oh, definitely the jacket. I'm going to give it a go. And I, in the back of my head, I've got this scarf as well. And she goes, oh, I like Karen's. And I said, yeah. I said, it just, just beautiful. So she too had remembered this beautiful scarf. There we go. We've slow stitched that two pieces of fabric together. We're ready to roll. Yep. Beautiful. So 
I might just finger press that open. It's probably not imperative, but you know, the old sewing days of garment making. Probably would be stronger if I did it that way, but less bulk this way. Wouldn't take much to pull that apart. So I'm gonna have to make sure I have a bit of fabric, you know, drifting. So, what's the plan? How do we approach this? Around the back of the neck, you don't see much. As it drifts over your shoulder, you probably see a little bit more. So should I work here, going out? Maybe that's a divided in half. Maybe that's what we do. I don't know. just go off the edge yeah that'll do oh goodness the decisions we won't get too far ahead of ourselves i think we'll ju i'm just i'm literally just going to focus on one side as long as i've got some big pieces for the other side so let's pull out those they're locked in and we've got some little viney bits oh, I've got plenty what am I worried about I've got plenty from the bottom Do I need to fussy cut them down even more? Oh, I'll tell you, the decisions, don't know. I tend to get a bit tighter in my fussy cutting than what I have done. Yep, that works. So that piece there, that piece there, that piece there. Then I can have a look at some of these little morsels and they can sneak in like that, can't they? Where's our center? Oh, I've still got a bit of, bit of space. Okay, so let's, let's pin these. Where's those applique pins? Because it might be full of pins and by using some applique pins at least that's less potential of jabbing and catching cotton as I stitch Next thing I've got to decide is what's going here. We've, we've got our feature, the pink flower. What's going to be meandering through and under it and around it and all of that? I'm thinking I might grab the scraps from when I cut it up. It's such soft, beautiful fabric. Don't know if I want to bring in anything new to the scene. Not yet. So it's typical, hey, we pull it all apart only to rebuild it back together <laughs> in its new form. Okay, so here we are coming up to the center, the back of my neck. So we've got plenty, plenty of pieces. It's actually gone further than I thought it would, which is great. I just stay away from that seam. And that way, if I do bring in some, 
some um, other fabrics to layer underneath it. So the problem with the layering of additional fabrics is it'll get thick. Won't it? Do I go any further? No, just stop there. So, where <clears throat> I'll put these pieces aside before they all get mixed up. They're for the other side or potentially little bits to pop in somewhere. Now this, let's let's talk about this. What am I going to do? So we got a set here, didn't we? We got a little bit of that. And we got one of those by two. So that's the other side of the scarf there. What are we gonna do with these? This is this is going to be interesting, isn't it? I think I could probably even break that down even more. Do we class this as embellishing? Am I putting the horse before the cart? I think I am. I think I need to back it back to what's going underneath these first. So we've got all of the bits just jumped up to grab let's move that out of the way move that out of the way this is just neutrals of cotton <clears throat> and linen it's a bit of old linen to be pieced in around over under <clears throat> scissors let's see how we go I think too by by sliding these in under it all I don't have a layer under here which is more thickness or do I want a layer under there or am I happy with just that Maybe I want a layer under there because I can see there's like, because it's so thin, I can see colored variances, but I'd see color variances anyway because I'm using scraps. Maybe I patch on top of it. Just bear with me, guys, as I grab a few morsels and see what comes of it. where we want to go but that's what we're doing for now maybe this crocheted edge I did say I liked it up over there so we sort of you know um, what's the word fractures of little not fractures little bits of glass when you piece it mosaic maybe we mosaic the 
don't know. It's fun playing. Let's see what comes of our little snippets here and there. Little layers of pieces. I guess we could be a little brave and pull in another colour, but oh, I don't know. There's a bit of the cotton. Where's the strip where that stain is? There. I don't know if I want to pull into that, actually. What else have we got in our little box of off-white cottons? There's a little bit more old linen. I guess the next question too is, what sort of stitching am I going to do? I don't think it's going to be a formal round the outside job. You know, where you go around the perimeter with a running stitch. I don't think it's going to be that. Gone quiet. Just work in a small area, see how we go. Still feels fairly lightweight under my hands, so I'm happy with it so far. It's not getting too dense. Might put a piece through there. tilted a bit and this piece here maybe it comes out looks better you're probably thinking gee that you see that looks like a big block do I want it more blocky do I want it softer <laughs> Hmm. I don't know if I like that. Do I want more of a square piece coming through? You know, a bigger, bigger piece of textile. and then come back through with just pieces a little less dense but you know start with something that'll allow me to have more stitching you know what I mean it won't be as um, bits But if I'm going to, if I'm going to, yeah, oh, gosh, maybe I've got to do bigger bits. I like that edge there. Just 
keep the little guys off for now. He's getting frustrated with me yet. All right, I'm going to take that edge off. It's a little bit of sewing machine pushing that's there. This doesn't, it's just not doing it. I'm not doing it. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to get rid of these pink flowers. Let's just back it up even more. I'm thinking too much about the flower design where I feel like I need a decorative base first. Does that make sense? I know it needs to be neutral because I want the flowers to be the feature and then embellishing on top of that. So I'm going to take the flowers off. Put them back in the stash. I'm going to start at the end here and I'm just going to lay some nice big pieces down and I'm going to camphor stitch it all down. Then we embellish with the flowers and go from there. That's what I'm going to do. All right, guys, we've made a decision for goodness sakes. Crazy girl. Gets there eventually. I just felt like we were getting too itty bitty too quick. Does that make sense? So I'm going to just piece on here some random big patches. If they're seen or not from those flowers, doesn't matter. It's just a nice piece of camphor stitched fabric. One there, no, it looks too similar to that, so we're going to come down there. All right, let's break this guy down. This guy might work now. Where's he going to go? Oh. <laughs> oh, it's funny, isn't it? I need more linen, cotton. Let me just grab my container. Good piece. There's a few lightweight. That's a bit lightweight. Another one. Let's see what we got now. <clears throat> this lightweight one would be good around my neck. It won't feel so bulky. I don't know what that's from. I think. I think it's one of mine. It's the neck's way up here. We're not even near the neck. For goodness sakes, we're not even anywhere near it. Got a stain there, but I'm sure we can cover it with something. Another stain, like all these old linens. So I've got a mix of linen and cotton, so I'm happy with that. We're still in the natural fibre um, world. Can't go too heavy with this stuff. I can feel weight here, but I think we're still okay. So we're doing big patches of fabric just to get ourselves something interesting in the background. We're not fiddling with the flowers yet because they're just going to get in the way and I'm going to be overthinking it and I really need something interesting for them to lie on. So there you go. We've, oh my goodness, that was exhausting. 35 minutes to get to that point. I think sometimes you get so focused on the embellishing side of things that you sort of, 
you miss the opportunity to get a substrate down. And if it's plain, well, I guess it's then <clears throat> how decorative do you make it? You've got this beautiful fabric that you want to use, but is it lost? I think I can't go too wrong with just a neutral, slow stitched panel of fabrics. And then we go from there. And then I might even be game to trim the roses down even more. So they become a little bit more dainty. But underneath it at least we'll be laying this collection of old textiles stitched. So it's not really exciting stitching wise for you guys, mind you. And how do we stitch it? Are we going to do just rows of stitching or are we going to do all sorts of random stitching? Gosh, it'll, this is going to take all year. I'll be weeks before I get my flowers in. Can I work this stuff into this at this stage? No, that's embellishing. Break it down into stages. Backgrounds, substrate, feature pieces, embellishing. There is a bit of a trick to all this, I think, now that I'm starting to do a lot of projects. I'm thinking, yeah, there's a bit of a pattern of behaviour happening here. There we go. So we get that solar seam. No, not yet. There it is there. I'm going to put this piece up here over that seam because I can feel that it's nice and lightweight. It's too thick. I need something soft. I'll just use a little bit of this. And that way, if I've got a collar on, it's not going to be awfully thick around that zone in case it needs to, you know, scrunch up underneath my collar. I can get a bit wider and bolder. I'm wanting squares, not circles. Need a bigger piece. Oh, I've been meaning to show you my new glasses. Goodness sakes, I tell you. I've got my bold glasses on. Remember a month ago, I was going to get my eyes tested and I really wanted to step it up in the selection of the frame. I felt like I was being safe all the time. So the plan was to get a bold frame and then if the budget was there, I'd get a second more subdued frame that if I was a chicken or just wanted to, you know, disappear into the, the distance, I'd have that second frame. So the bold frame, would you believe, it's on my face all the time. I don't know if that's just sheer laziness. You get up in the morning frame goes on face and that happens every day for the next year I don't know but I love them <laughs> and even then people have said Corinne that's not that bold so would you like to see my bold frame let me just take them off are you ready this is as bold as it gets there we go so that's bold isn't it a very blue and then to tone it down, there were some that were blue right through, but I found these had that soft pink. So that sort of blends into my skin tone and my blonde hair. But I've got this pop of blue around the front. So there you go. There's my bold frame. As for my finer coloured frame, it's just a metal, lightweight, pale pink little frame. So... It's in its case in um, beside my bed, so I haven't got that handy to show you. But yeah, there you go. I'm just going to cut to the side of this. There's a mark. It's always where the fabrics are folded, isn't it? It's like just time has worn it. Like it's right through the center there, and I bet that was folded in a cupboard. And it's that exposed to light edge. I 
Okay, so we cut another decent piece. Can't go too crazy with this girl. This is quite dense. But I think it might help it hang on my um, clothes. I've got a bit of a mix here, so turn it over because that crease is forcing me. There we go. So the plan will be to stitch all of this down in some way. Are we going to go round and round the pieces? Probably not, because the stitching would be out here and all of this would be hanging around. So I've got to, got to lock it down. It's got to become one piece of fabric. So that brings me back to Boro Stitch. What I could do is focus on one piece of fabric and just Boro Stitch it down. Then this one goes this way. This one goes this way. That one goes, I think I'm going to do that. That will give me lots of different lines, you know, working through. Well, that was that bing. No, just a message. Um, could I work in a piece of lace at this stage or am I just going off track again? Stay on track, girl. Use all these scraps. Where's this little guy? He's lovely with the little holes in him. Let's find some holes, guys. <clears throat> We're getting there. I know you'd probably be thinking this is like watching paint dry. But I'm sure you've gathered by now that my channel is very much, what are we gonna do? <laughs> And think it through, plan it through, and try and come out with some form of product at the end that we go, yeah, that's good. The pressure is, will we wear it? Maybe I'm getting a little confident because I love my jacket. At least this could be a snippet roll <laughs> if I get to a point. And I think what I'm going to do is just focus on the first half and get my plan sorted. And then if I get to the point where I go, look guys, I don't think I'm ever gonna wear this and I'm putting so much texture down and some beautiful pieces of fabric, I can always say, righto, that's it, stop. We're going to make it into something else. And that's okay. You don't have to finish what we set out to do, you know, it's, there's no, no, there's no pressure or anything to just carry on because you said you're going to do it a certain way. If you know me by now, I'll change directions like that. It's very much me in life, I think. If I see that it's just not going the way I imagined, that's it. I pick up stakes and make some adjustments. I'm very quick to adapt to change. I remember doing a survey years ago when I was working for um, Blockbuster Video. And they did a, oh, I don't think it's a psychological analysis, but it was definitely one of those workshops that where they analyze how you process things. Let me just put that there. I just feel like I need to. And um, you, you work, it was a disc, I think it was called. And it sort of established your personality traits and your work traits. Oh, there's a stain. That's why I'm doing that. Um, in the workplace. And I, I scored through the process. It was like a booklet answering all the questions and then you gather points and that sort of puts you into a category at the end of it. So by the time I'd finished, it was established that I had a very high drive and I was quite organized but I was to the point of being so organized that I was nearly chaotic it was like a if you picture one to twelve one is a mess you just can't get anything to a finish line right through to number 11 and 12 which is you are so organized that whatever you set your mind to you achieve whether you need to change direction 10 times you will get there because you're focused on the goal so it's very goal driven 
where number one, you might have a goal, but it could take you years to get there because you just, just can't, you know, line up your ducks. And I came in at 12. But the problem with 12 is, yes, you may think the girl can achieve lots of things when she sets her mind to it. But I was so close to tipping over the edge and actually turning up at number one where you don't achieve in anything because you just, yeah, chaos ensues. So you really, I think the company was thinking that the perfect employee was probably about a 10 or a 9. So you, you get there, but steady because companies don't like, you know, hair brains, do they? They like... <laughs> But anyway, the, the long story is I turned out that I was a 11 and a half, nearly a 12. And it was quite an eye opener because when I sat down with my superior at the time and had a talk about the results and it was like part of an appraisal, it sort of made sense because I'd, I'd look at my district and I had uh, at one stage 30, 31 blockbuster video stores to oversee. And then as the years went on, a lot of them got franchised. So the core group right at the very end was probably about 12. And they were all over Queensland with one at Alice Springs. And the gentleman that was my superior, he, um, he'd been with the company a while. He was very well respected. I had a lot of time for him. He was a strong character. He wasn't a weak leader. Very strong, very assertive. So I really did admire him. And I said to him in this appraisal that sometimes I just feel so overwhelmed by how many tasks there are to achieve that I, I feel like I'm going round and round and round circles because I'm just sort of putting spot fires out everywhere and not putting in place a strategy to fix something that then, you know, um, eliminated future spot fires. And that's what showed up in that thing, that I'm very quick to, I'm just looking for more fabric. I've run out of interesting pieces. So I'm rummaging, bear with me. Oh, this piece is nice. It's even got a little bit of crocheting on it. So yeah, and it showed up in that thing that I'm trying to be so efficient and boom, 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 make my lists and I, I have lists and I work through lists and I delegate and I can do all that. But there was this, where's that seam? There was this underlying feeling like I was chasing my tail. And he said um, he could see it as well. Just watching my weekly report to him, you know, what are you up to this week? And he said the list that you would give yourself was massive. And he said then you'd find in a couple of weeks' time you were back revisiting that situation because you hadn't really... Put it to bed it was still percolating and that was because i was missing that really minute detail where you take a breath and go oh that's actually happening because maybe that employee is not happy in their role or you know that type of thing i see i had a little piece under there and i've hooked it out because the big piece can't get too small corinne that's <laughs> maybe just a little bit Just there. Um, so, yeah, and it showed up in that report that I have that much lists going on that they got chaotic real quick. And I missed the detail of fixing something that it never came back up on the list. And I thought, wow. And that's so typical. My husband will be the first to say that. He'll be like, that girl, she's heading off on many tangents and it's like the hare and the tortoise my husband's the tortoise and I'm the hare we always end up at the finish line together he gets there slowly considerate thinking planning moving forward gently I'm like a rabbit and just go boom, 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 and I get there but when I get to the end I flag like I'm lying on the finish line going oh my goodness that was just so exhausting and it didn't need to be haven't I got itty bitty there? But I haven't there. Let's just whack a bit in. I could be wasting 
bits because there'll be a big flower there. Right, just stop. I'm going to take that bit out. See, I'm jumping ahead again. Take that bit out. Oh, now I've messed it up. I don't think I've changed much. Gosh, that was probably 25 years ago. I would have been 20, uh, 25, yeah, probably 24. Imagine what they said when they got back to head office and they had all the results of us and they looked at us and go, yes, that Corinne up in Queensland, that makes sense because she's definitely a high achiever, but boy... She's going to burn herself out. And that's pretty much what happened. The, the role in the end became, not, well, I wasn't burnt. I was burnt out on challenges. I had it running beautifully, the state and the staff were great. We, it, were just, it, was, it took a little bit, but I, I was really happy with it. And then I started getting bored. And I remember sitting down with my superior near the end and he was a new gentleman and he was really good too the first guy was very authoritarian and structure and rule the roost get your systems in place the next guy was more all about the gentle approach developing your people um, really investing in the humans that are around you and it'll pay dividends which it did and it was exactly the right superior i needed because it just showed me then techniques to develop people and build a team. And then my, what do they call it when people don't leave? Retrition rate? There's a, a word they use in corporate. It was really low because I just had a great team of people. I wanted to work for them and they wanted to work for me. So this next leader that I got... He was like the operations manager for the country. He'd come and sit down with me at appraisal time. And he'd say, well, what do you want to do now? And I'd say, well, I don't know because everything is just minor little spot fires. You know, you know, someone might decide to go on with their career and suddenly you've got a team that's got no manager. Well, that was the extent of it. There's still the odd random thing happened, but pretty much... It was pretty stable. And this went on for a couple of years with this gentleman as my superior. And each time, every 12 months, what are you going to do now? And it was really, well, what can I do? And that's when I started to think, righto, well, maybe this is enough. I've done all I can do here. The next role was his role, which was operations manager. And I was not interested in getting that high up into corporate that was moving to Melbourne. I, nah, was not me. And I, I didn't really want to travel the state talking to state managers like myself and saying, well, how are you going with it? What are you doing? It was not hands-on enough. It was a real leadership type. That's that stain piece. We don't want that. It's not so stained on the other side. Look at that. No. Nope. Yeah, so in the end, I ended up moving on and my husband and I bought a Wendy's ice cream franchise and it was just what we needed. He was working as a faults technician with Telstra, so he was starting to see the same faults. He'd been there a few years too. Same faults, you know, it'll be this, this or this, process of elimination. So he was starting to get itchy feet. We were renovating... Uh, houses on the side so after work we'd be you know prepping properties pulling out bathrooms so we were just we were go getting we were getting going so it just got to the stage where really the next challenge for me was probably another company or a business and my husband was like gee it's the same faults I'm starting just to become a bit of a robot and he was working outside in the heat and the weather. And he was like, oh, am I going to be here for another 15 years? So that's sort of the situation that came from it all. We end up buying a small business and that was the start of it. That, oh, that was the challenge of a lifetime, wasn't it? Owning a business, 
which then led to starting a business from scratch, which was my Christmas stores. And that has been more than enough challenge to keep the Energizer Bunny happy. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Bit of chitty chatter while I piece down boring pieces of monotone fabric. It's not very exciting, isn't it? Okay, guys, I'm going to invisible stitch it now which is you know basting um what did um catherine call it the other day um glue stitch which i thought was interesting it's so cool being able to listen to others in other countries talk about their way of approaching all a similar thing but it's something that's come from their culture or oh, some of them I, I can't even understand the language they're saying but I can see I can visually see what they're up to and they're doing what we're doing and I'm like oh if only I could speak Portuguese then I'd know what the name of that stitch is which is clearly for me invisible stitch or basting when I was at school it was basting but it was a big stitch on the top not a little stitch where now we're doing little stitches. That way we don't need to pull it out. It just stays, stays put. So I think the plan will be to just work the perimeter of this little guy here. It will catch what is underneath. Well, we're making progress. The scarf slash snippet roll. <laughs> I promise I'm going to stay on task. It's a scarf. I, I'm, I'm pretty confident. I've got a um, a an older denim jacket that I've had for years, so I know it'll look gorgeous just sitting on denim. Not so much with the one that I've embellished with you guys because it's completely different tones. I wear a lot of black, you know, black jackets, charcoal colored jackets, and I often put a pale pink knitted scarf with those or a cream scarf. So I'm pretty confident that this will slide into my wardrobe and appear occasionally. If not, maybe I store it on a snippet roll. And then when people look at it and go, oh, yeah, 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 that's that's actually a scarf. I'm just storing it on a snippet roll in my craft room. I don't know. I might hang it around my mannequin. Who knows? Like I said, there's no pressure. If you're making a scarf and you decide, oh, it's a bit too leery, well, then it's okay. We will forgive you. I think there's going to be quite a few cuffs out there that may appear once. It'd be something you could easily wear to a craft group or the other place I thought of that you could go and wear it at is when you go to those big um, stitching fairs or a retreat, you pop your, your cuff on. If you're at a barbecue with friends and rallies, they may look at it and going, why are you wearing scrap bits of fabric around your wrist or they'll in their mind sort of go oh that's just so typical of that girl she's made some random item <laughs> so I'm just going to whiz up this side and I'm feeling like that fabric is nice and secure I might just relocate those few pins that edge is set but I just don't want that to wriggle let me just get myself my anaconda can't believe I've got to this stage I have spent weeks thinking about this I even got to the point where I regretted 
mentioning a scarf in that one video and I pulled out that pink piece of rose fabric. I was like, oh, I should have just kept it quiet because then I could have just left it alone and I thought, no, I want to try, I want to try. And here we are at least giving it a try. Might become one of my sit, stitch and chat. Here comes Fudge. There we go. Now just to make sure that that fabric doesn't bubble, I'm just going to knot that. But I'm going to come at a diagonal back through. So let me turn that around. I'm going to come straight through there. So I've got a little bit of thread. Where's my pins? There we go. Just to help it seat into the into the backing fabric really becomes part of it then. Yep. All right, so I'm going to dodge off and I'm going to invisible stitch my patches down. then I'll be back and we'll decide what form of stitching we will do on those patches. Might hop on Pinterest to have a look at just basic stitching and have a bit of a think about that. I think once I start, you know, invisible stitching all this down it'll give me a bit, a bit of time for my mind to just slow down for a little bit have a think about it yeah and it still feels nice and light I'm, I'm, uh, I'm good I'm happy with that all right guys I'm gonna leave you alone I'm gonna toddle off have a lovely day and um, yeah I'll see you all in the next video bye